We just finished our C note show for today. C note show for today. I'm Mr. Jeff Allen. This is Cynthia Cruz, the only woman allowed on this channel and on the C note show for her professional feminine perspective. Thanks for being here, Cynthia. Thanks for having me. Today on the show, we 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 were <laughs> wow, we were highlighting <laughs> the lover energy, the archetype of the lover energy from the book uh, King Warrior Magician Lover which is also based off of the Jungian archetypes, the Jungian masculine archetypes, king, warrior, magician, lover. And the lover is wanting sensual experience in the world. We wanted to feel the world, mother nature. We wanna feel love in our experiences within relationship and sex and passion and intimacy, whether it's within our own chest, within our relationship or out in the world. And the shadow form of the lover energy is the impotent lover or the addicted lover. And we can swing back and forth between those. And what we highlighted today was that addicted lover energy, the I want to chase her, I'm codependent. She says she wants space. And so it makes me chase harder. She says she's not in love with me anymore. And I keep asking her questions over and over all day long to try to validate myself and make sure that everything's okay, even though you know that it's not okay. And that addiction, the trying to fill the colander of our soul uh, as uh, my colleague Dennis Collins called it it's not a hole in the bucket it's the fucking colander where it just it just runs right through right so maybe you have that in your life right now it feels that way in your relationship because she wants space she's backing away from you and you find yourself almost uh, being overtaken like a werewolf in the full moon of wanting validation and to chase her so we, of course, you know that that's not going to help you, right? She's, she's going to push you away farther. She's going to run away farther and faster if you chase her. So what you need to do in this phase of what you're going through is detox from the addiction, De detox yourself from the addiction of the potential codependency that you've been in, or even the addiction of the love that you've had doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing, but if you've been leaning on someone and they step away, if you don't have grounded feet within yourself, deep rooted uh, energy and belief in yourself, masculinity within your own self, you're gonna fall over. And that's not good for you. That's not good for your family, your children, your career, and it's certainly not gonna help you reattract your ex or that next woman in your life. So Cynthia, what does it feel like uh, when a man actually starts to detox from this? For instance, I warn men about the rebound phase. Like if you've just ended a relationship and you haven't done this work on yourself and you're still trying to feed that addiction of validation, that definitely you can get in trouble in the rebound phase there. What would you add to that? What does it feel like when a man is actually finally detoxed from the, the addiction? What would you add to that? Please? Yeah, well, I, anytime there is relationship, especially if there's you know, over attachment or under attachment, there's, it's like these invisible strings between you and your partner. And whether one person's pushing and the other is pulling, that hook is there. When you are detoxing from that and you're actually unhooking yourself from that cord can have a huge impact on that other person. And for a woman to experience a man who is detoxing from her, detoxing from the relationship, there's several things that can happen. One, when you unhook like that, all of a sudden her cord is like in the wind and she's like, oh, wait a minute, what I was pushing so hard against because it felt a little good to push against is not there anymore. And that can like, she wants that feeling. She wants a connection back. And another experience that she can have is, there's a detox and a deep, an unhooking. And all of a sudden, all this tension that was hooked into her body can relax. And she can get back in touch with what she really feels in her heart. And sometimes those original experiences she had with you are what attracts her to you. And so regardless of what her feeling is, whether it's a, I do want to come back or it's, there's a relief and she does move on the other way, that detox and that unhooking is gonna be win-win for everyone involved, whether it's relationship back with her or you detoxing her and then moving on to something that is much more magical, wonderful, powerful and what you're truly wanting in relationship. 
Yeah, beautifully. Well said. So I have a cherry on top here in a moment. If you're wanting to ask how to move through the phase that you're in, and if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one consult with me, it's, there's no strings attached for the first call. That's how I work. I put my heart out there first. I believe in heart and business, heart and business. And my heart is to do a one-on-one -on -one consult, a full hour. I don't do the 15 minute BS. It's a full hour. I don't talk business at all during that hour. Go to www.greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact and fill out the form to get in touch with me. Here's where I am. This is the pains that I'm going through. How can I save this? How can I turn this around? How can I be amazing in my own life no matter what as a man? You're going to need that no matter what happens in your relationship, either for you, your kids, or the next woman in your life, or version 2.0 of your marriage. And here's your cherry on top. So as you unhook, one thing that often happens as you start to differentiate yourself more and more, one thing that happens is there's change going on and she may shame you for that change. She's going to feel uneasy within herself. Now she may praise you for that, that that's great. But what's often is that she starts to feel uneasy and she's not even aware of it necessarily. There's an unconscious reaction. And this works either way. If she starts to outgrow you, you might actually not feel good about that, right? And how you handle it shows the level of emotional control and maturity that you have when you're facing something that's difficult. So as you outgrow her potentially, as you grow within your own self, let's say, she may shame you and say that you're being selfish or now you're narcissistic or what are these changes that are happening? You're being more of an asshole now. That doesn't necessarily mean that those are all bad things. And what she's saying may not necessarily be true. It's from her point of view, she's feeling fear and change and uncertainty. And you've gotten to this place in your relationship for you know, not great reasons, probably on both sides. So there was some shit that was happening already. And now just because she's saying she doesn't like what's going on with you doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing. So reach out, on our, reach out to our free Facebook forum, post within the chat, come in our free daily call Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, or reach out to me, www.greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. Cynthia, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you. Go Move Mountains one step at a time, guys.